Hello, it is Friday, September 2nd, 2022. I'm Chris Remode. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday puzzle today, which means our first of two themeless puzzles for the week. And this themeless edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Skella Chicken, Quotidiophile, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel with their generous contributions. I do very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors, you can get the Daily Self Let's Check the Crosses mug, and that can be found at uh, patreon.com slash daily solve or in the link in the description field underneath the video. And of course, it's a new Patreon month. So if you've been waiting for that to take over, uh, feel free. And I put up the new uh, the solve of the most recent New York Times monthly bonus puzzle. This one, uh, so this went up uh, yesterday and is themed around something called Ask a Stupid Question Day or Ask a Silly Question Day, as it was phrased in the title of the puzzle for some reason. I'm not entirely sure. I can't explain the discrepancy. In any case, that is up there on Patreon right now. And if you back the Patreon campaign at any level, you will get access to that as well as all of the other bonus videos that have gone up uh, on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week, such as the, well, that one and the forthcoming uh, weekly speed solve, which I will do uh, today after I do this crossword. And speaking of this crossword, this is a Friday puzzle by Claire Rimkus. Claire Rimkus has constructed around half a dozen puzzles for the New York Times, and uh, it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. I completely forgot to mention all the other things. So <laughs> subscribe to the channel, join the Daily Solve Discord chat server, all of that. Anyway, uh, it's all in the description field. Let's solve the puzzle. Let's start solving. Okay, subject of some family planning. Pregnancy? That fits. Let's check the crosses on that. Danish shoe brand, not sure. Side dish with pastrami. Slaw, maybe? Not sure which way to go. Iffy or a C? I think this might not be pregnancy. Butterfly attracting perennials. Asters? Okay, I think this is wrong. Okay, if this were, I'm just going to put in some of these guesses. If these were slaw, not sure which way to go. I think this is butterfly attracting perennial flowers. I think it's asters. Earth is globe. Uh, so it could be soil, loams. Uh, those are both four, four letters at loam. Um, Nuodum of SNL, I don't know. Read with, sorry, reel with hilarity. And prefix with sexual. This could probably be quite a few things. Um, yeah, I mean, I can think of several valid prefixes. When said three times, expression of mock surprise. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. That's sort of mock surprise. What about this down here? Possessive noun. Owner? It's sort of a, um, so when you see possessive noun, it looks like it's a, it's a noun. Well, yeah, I mean, it looks like this is saying something more grammatical than it is, but I think it's just saying a known, sorry, a noun, no, a noun that describes possession, a noun that is uh, describing someone who possesses things. That's why there's a question mark. It's a bit of a pun. So an owner is someone who is possessive in the sense that they literally possess things and owner is a noun. So Danish shoe brand. Oh, is this the echo? E -C -E? Is that this or is that something else? Or is it ECCO? It's something, it's something like this. They make it all tire, tied up. Um, and what pings may indicate... What pings may indicate? Oh, this isn't a C, if this is owner. Oh, torn. Oh, estate law, <laughs> subject to some family planning. Very clever, very, very clever. So dealing with inheritance and that sort of thing, I suppose. 
Um, whereas typically when we talk about family planning, we do mean things surrounding um, pregnancy or, or, or the avoidance of it or what have you. Um, that's very clever. Okay, they may get all tied up. Close canes? Oh, that's very clever as well. They make it all tied up because you refer to an even score in in a game as, as the score is all tied up. That's very clever. Earth, okay, so Terra, referring to Earth. There we go. And then Nuodum of SNL. As we know from a recent puzzle, I just do not know SNL cast members outside of the ones that literally everybody knows from, I don't know, decades ago, I guess. What pings may indicate... Car. Why can't I see what that is? It's very surprising. Uh, real with hilarity, prefix with sexual. Okay, ambisexual. There we go. Um, that's probably the answer. Breathing apparatus. Oh, a gill. A fish. A fish's breathing apparatus. A gill. Identity could be oneself, and. Oh, car trouble. Oh, I see. Your engine might ping in your car and it indicates something's wrong. Um, or it would be evidence, I guess, more accurately that something's wrong. Uh, okay, so ego nuodim or nuodim ego. And then real with hilarity. Oh, a laugh track, maybe? That makes sense. So a reel in the sense of a, a reel of audio, I guess, sort of what that means. And of course, there's a question mark indicating a punnery or wordplay. Um, if someone is reckless, they're being rash. And set up is, could be set up, well, I was going to say it could be a set up, but that would be a single word, actually. So I don't think it's a noun. I think it is a verb. Um, we haven't looked at actually just the ordinary acrosses here, so let's do that. Uh, modern day locale of the ancient Achaemenid Empire. Uh, is it Iran? Sorry if that's blatantly incorrect. 2003 search and rescue target. I don't know. It's not Nemo or something. Is it like the film Finding Nemo? Um, I don't know if it is. Hi in Paris. O, um, which would be the masculine and the feminine. Haute is in haute couture. High fashion. Um, anything blank? Anything else? Start forward enough, I think. Let's see, what, what do we have in here? Blissed out. Um, I was going to say maybe on the something, but that doesn't fit. Response to a juvenile joke, perhaps. I'm not sure. Del oh, someone asked, actually, I was going to read this in the, um, in the clues from yesterday's puzzle. Oh, I just re that reminded me I should put my phone in airplane mode. Sorry about that. I forgot to do that. The last couple of days, and apparently we still had airplane. Um, sorry, still had cellular noise. I'm sorry. Anyway, someone uh, Susho Vande asked, "What's the difference when a clue ends in perhaps versus when it ends with a question mark?" So, a question mark is when a clue involves some degree of ex express punnery or wordplay. So, we had at least one. Yeah. So, possessive noun. So, this is this is really pretty punny because you wouldn't really call owner a possessive noun per se. But if you sort of interpret this in a punny sort of way, you say, I see, owner is a noun that is possessive in the sense that it describes someone who possesses things. Um, whereas when something says perhaps, it usually means an example of this thing. So it's not it's not indicating a pun. It's, it's usually, this will be a, presumably a direct a direct answer that is a response to a juvenile joke. It doesn't require interpreting it through a punny lens or thinking about wordplay. That perhaps just means this might be that. This this could be a response to a juvenile joke. If you think of it that way, it sort of makes more sense. Uh, you, you, it's just saying, yeah, th think that this might be one of these, maybe. Yeah, maybe, th maybe this would be a response to a juvenile joke. If you just think of it literally what the word perhaps means, maybe, and sort of try and read it that way in your head, I think that'll pretty much put you on the right track. I don't yet know the answer though, so we'll have to return to that. Delight could be amuse. You delight somebody, you amuse them. Point taken. Got it or something? I'm not... Have we seen this yet? Oh, right. 
Oh, maybe this is Nemo. Oh, that's funny. Point taken. Maybe this isn't else. Anything... Yeah, I don't I can't I don't know why I can't see that. Set up and then trespasses sins maybe. Um that could be a verb or a noun actually. Expo freebies, right? So at a convention or a big exposition or something. This is often referred to as swag, the kind of free, usually advertiser supported um bag of stuff you're given. A uh, tiny bit could be an iota, one iota, one tiny bit. Romance could be to woo somebody to court them. When a protag when a, sorry when a <laughs> protagonist when a procrastinator gets to work at the last minute there we go. I'm sure, many of us can relate to that. Uh, Libreville is its capital. Is it Gabon? Far from it. Got together maybe not. Pasta for a pesto. Penne? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> they all, uh, it's just alliterative, which is a nice little touch, if that's in fact the answer, which it, I guess it may not be. Um, but I'm guessing penne because it feels like the alliterative, the alliteration would be a fun intentional touch there. So you could, you could dress penne in pesto, the pasta. Clutch, e.g., that could be a purse. So here's e.g., an example of the thing. So a purse is, a clutch is uh, one sort of purse is what that's meaning. Okay, Bob Odenkirk's role on Breaking Bad was uh, the character Saul Goodman, who uh, has his own, I guess, recently concluded show, I think. On is a top. You could say this is on something. It's a top it. Davis of Do the Right Thing would be the late Ozzie Davis, the actor. The great uh, Spike Lee film. And... Expert in animal control, a pet something. Gave a ticket is cited uh, somebody for an infraction, a civil infraction, I guess. And then animal in, sorry, expert in animal control is a pet trainer. There we go. So this is almost a pun because we think animal control and you think, I think usually some sort of, I don't know, municipal maybe service in, in which officials are dispatched to deal with a potentially dangerous animal, but this is more benign than that. It just means controlling an animal in a general sense. And so you could almost imagine this having a question mark. And I think maybe on Monday or Tuesday, perhaps it would. Actually, that reminds me. Someone did mention that as well. I don't know if I pulled that comment out, but somebody somebody made the point in response to, I think, that overall question about uh, question marks. Yes, Tim Kent said, I think the standard of clue difficulty required to earn a question mark goes up over the course of the week. For example, uh, the Thursday's puzzle, Current Phenomenon, resolving to El Nino, doesn't need a question mark. Uh, and as Chris said, it's a gray area, but I suspect the same clue on an easy Monday puzzle would have needed a question mark. And yes, I think that's I think that's true. Um, and so this one, I think this might have had a question mark earlier in the week, but who knows? Anyway, Hilson with the 2010 hit Pretty Girl Rock. Not sure. Here we have low blank, low main, maybe the, the, the dish, the, I don't know. Is that a, Ch a Chinese dish or a Chinese American dish? Probably both. And they're probably different. I don't know. Maybe it's just Chinese American anyway, uh, or sort of Westernized Chinese Hilson. So this looks like Carrie Hilson. I mean, that sounds plausible. Blank, Sam oh, sorry, B Sandberg of Brooklyn nine, nine, Andy Sandberg, probably the comic actor. And I've never actually seen Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but I know some people are, I know that it's one of those shows people are really fanatical about. Ocean of Ocean's Eleven, the character Danny Ocean, um, originated by Frank Sinatra, I guess, and then played by George Clooney. Sight of the Jordan Gate Towers. Oh, is it Amana or... I uh, could be totally wrong. I could be on the wrong track if I'm thinking of the wrong thing. What about this? So one who's probably going to work out. A gym rat. Sparklers could be gems, maybe. Gems sparkle. Tiny bit can be an atom. Oh, and we had... Oh, look at that. 
uh, this is always nice. It's symmetrical to a tiny bit an iota. Two very common <laughs> bits of fill in the crossword for something very small, a small piece of something, an iota and an atom, and they're symmetrically disposed. Court calls could be lets on a tennis court, I guess. And fester. If something is going to fester, it will rot. And, oh, right. Oh, response to a juvenile joke, perhaps, is real mature. There you go. I see. So that, and, and this, is a good, this is a good example of the perhaps, because real mature doesn't literally mean response to a juvenile joke. And it isn't necessarily that. You're just saying perhaps, because sure, you could respond to a juvenile joke by saying real mature. That's a, that's a response to that, maybe. And that, that's where that's coming from. Okay. What did I look at this one? Oh, I did look at it and didn't really get anywhere. Blissed out in heaven. There we go. Okay. And then set up is framed to someone um, for a crime. Pop singer blank max. Not sure. Landing spot for a bee. The petal of a flower, I suppose. And if something is fast moving, it's rapid. So pop singer Ava max. And then anything else was the case. Oh, okay. This was Iran as I thought. And then point taken is noted. Okay, well, I don't remember, why did I have so much trouble with this? I guess it was just that I was, I think I had pretty good guesses about all of these. I think I had Iran, Nemo, this one I put in, else I had at one point. And yet, for some reason, I just couldn't see this, and so it caused me to not fill most of it in. I don't really know what was going on there. Anyway, point taken, noted. That's how I feel about that whole, <laughs> this whole corner. Point taken, corner. All right, far from it. Not even close, no. Got together. Buckle holder, a clasp. Actress Emma Roberts to Julia Roberts. I don't know who Emma Roberts is, um, but I'm guessing they're family members based on the clue. So niece. That's the only family member I can think of that would fit neatly in here. That's my guess. Oh, well, that doesn't look good though. Here, what does it? Wound. Maybe this isn't class, but I was not, I'm not very certain about that. Let's try niece and see if that helps anything. Declaration at the end of an exam. Oh, maybe it's not this either. Oh, I can't think of anything here because I was thinking declaration at the end of an exam could be done, but then doesn't really work with what I was thinking there. I'll just look elsewhere. When Hamilton meets Burr and Hamilton, I guess it must be act one. I've seen Hamilton, but I, uh, yeah, I mean, it must've been act one because Burr, I think, gives him some early advice. Okay. Chuck alternative. Chuck could be, this could be referring to a beef, beef cut. Um, what is the alternative to that or an alternative? Fill in, this is fill in as, it looks like it's as a noun because it's it's hyphenated. So typically, if this were being used as a verb, if you were going to say, I'm going to fill in that form, it would be two different words. That's just, just generally in English, the convention. There's no, um, it's not necessarily obvious, but it's just how it, how it tends to work when you make a compound verb or noun like that. So this looks to me like a noun. But what noun? Not a possessive noun. What is it? Cultural attraction in Midtown NYC. I don't think of Midtown as being particularly packed with cultural attractions. Um, but I'm sure there are some obvious examples I'm not thinking of. So right. Amen, maybe? Queer Eye star, Jonathan Van. I'm sure I've seen this name, but I don't. I've actually never seen Queer Eye. Okay, site of the, oh, is it Amon? Maybe, is that what I was thinking of? Not Amon. I think I was just literally misremembering the place name here. Uh, well, I don't know, but I can't, I don't know. Can't confirm confirm it with those other crosses, so I'm going to skip it. One might say before conforming. Oh, when in Rome, right. <laughs> the idiom, when it, the, 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 you know, fairly, fairly well-known phrase. I think when in Rome do as the Romans do, but it's due to familiarity and use. It's kind of largely become 
shortened to simply saying when in Rome and then the rest of it is implied. Okay, um, Chuck alternative. Oh, a chop, maybe? Not really confident about that. Some bronze applications. Yeah, I don't think this is right. Uh, spray tans. So instead of, well, not instead of, but an application of bronzer could be via spray. Okay, so, oh, is it MoMA? The, is it the Museum of Modern Art? And then Sang is named names. Oops. So Sang as in uh, grasped or, you know, told, uh, told the police, for instance, about the involvement of your compatriots in a crime or something. So that, that gave us some, some crosses. So let's look at those. Chuck alternative. Okay, this looks wrong. What did I do wrong here? Chuck. Chaz, is that something? Is that something I just don't know? Are they, are those names? Maybe. I mean, they are they are names. Not really sure what's going on there. Is there any way this is wrong? Is it not Act One? Is it just something else entirely? Fill oh fill in could be a temp. Yeah, that makes sense. So a te temporary worker, for instance. Leave that just for the time being. Queer Eye star Jonathan Van Ness, I guess. I have to hope that's correct because I think this is Amon. Um, when a duel may be scheduled at dawn. Okay, this looks like act one. Chuck alternative, Chaz. Sorry, I'm sorry if this is just screaming out at you and you're e yelling at me about this. I just don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, wound or wound actually. If it were, actually, if it were wound, it could be coiled as in, you know, a wire or something. Buckle holders, that could be clasp. Not a blank, not a group defending trans rights. I don't know, the ACLU or something? I'm trying to think who, what about this? Tim of Sister Sister. Declare, boy, this is, this is, um, this is area is, oops. Why did I put Woiled in there? Um, all right, well, let's see. Let's try that because it's the only real guess I have in this area. Buckle holder, okay. If, if this were ACLU, this would not be class. What could it be? It could be buckle. A strap. So wound or wound. Not a blank, not a peep, you could say. Not a peep. Don't make a sound. There we go. That's a common phrase, not a peep. Um, declaration at the end of an exam. Time, time. The person administering the exam might say that, not the person doing. Right, of course. You're not supposed to declare things when you finish the test. I mean, that might disturb other students, I suppose. Okay. Actress Emma Roberts to Julia Roberts. Okay, it is niece. My first guess was correct. So this is what? Wound or wound? It's snared maybe or something? Or Team of sister, sister, far from it, N not, no, got together. I mean, this could maybe be Tim Reed with an I, or sorry, an I. That sort of looks like it could be something, but I'm still not sure what. So got together is hooked up, maybe. There we go. Okay. And then wound is it was wound wound snaked not oh not by a mile this was Gabon okay a lot of my early guesses were more correct than I thought um I guess they can't really be more correct than I thought they're either correct or they're not in a crossword anyway not by a mile and then oh here we didn't see this that there quaintly is yawn that's that's fair enough and then this must be Tim Reed, and that's the puzzle. All right, that was a very puzzly puzzle for me. I had to puzzle through several of these answers by sort of stacking speculation onto, onto itself and, and confirming and denying various guesses with eventual crosses. And that's I always sort of enjoy that, especially on the themeless puzzles when the point of the puzzle is just sort of pure fill. So you're engaging with the fill in that way. Um, 
so yes, I think a very nicely, nicely constructed themeless puzzle. It was a tricky one um, for me, I thought, but managed to managed to push my way through with perseverance. And it was the corners, I guess, that gave me trouble, particularly the northeast and southwest corners. Um, I guess that makes sense. It's funny, with these long answers, sometimes it sort of emotionally feels like they should be more difficult, but often they're not because they're just, especially in phrases, there just are fewer total possibilities. Although it didn't stop me from not getting not by a mile until the very end. But um, yeah, often these small words here, things that could be a number of things or, or short names. I mean, a short name could be so many, you have so many possibilities because you know, with all of the different origins of names. I mean, there's just, there's just such a huge possibility space there. So yeah, it was these corners that really gave me trouble. And then something like wound and wound. I mean, this is a classic themeless clue in that this, it, I mean, it means two different things. And I, uh, well, at least two different things that I think of off the top of my head. And each one of them itself has quite a few synonyms and senses. So, and in fact, even, uh, a, a, you, you know, wound could be both a noun and a verb itself. So even that is split into different parts of speech. So anyway, that is exactly how a themeless puzzle is meant to challenge us. And shall we move on? That's that for today's puzzle. So let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. All right, so... Well, first off, this was something I didn't notice, and I'm, I'm glad somebody, some people did in the comments. Yesterday's puzzle, result, the, the, the theme was a mathematical expression that resolved to the number 91. And I thought, what is the significance of 91? Well, Dances with Logic points out, today's date is 9 slash 1. So in the American Dating Convention, September 1st, 9-1. Very good. And Alan Eaton points out, there is a clue referring to dates, the 2 in 1-2. So yes, the constructor even put in a little hint there in should have put my mind in the in the space of thinking about dates but i i just didn't didn't get there so thank you very much dances with logic and alan eton for pointing that out okay nicole hicks points out regarding the cruise uh, the the um strip lights and the answer was neon i sort of was thinking of that as strip lighting which isn't isn't, I don't think it's as accurate as Nicole Hicks's interpretation, which is that the Las Vegas Strip is home to a lot of neon lights. That, I think, is much more accurate. I think it was probably referring to the famous Las Vegas Strip. Okay, and McKenna, and a, a few other people as well, but this is the first person I saw, pointed out that tennis scoring goes up to 40, not 45, annoyingly, and then is deuce if tied at 40, yes. I was, as I was saying it, I was, as I was saying 45, I was thinking, this doesn't sound quite right, but I couldn't, I just couldn't figure out why I was thinking that. So it's, it's 15, 30, 40, then it's game, or then it goes into, then it goes into the, the additional, uh, the sort of add advantage system if it's tied at 40. And uh, yeah, I, I have played tennis. I, I, over the past year or so, I've started playing badminton, and that is scored in a much more ordinary one, two, three, four, five kind of scoring. So uh, didn't, did, didn't have to retain that tennis scoring knowledge. All right. Uh, Altfooter points out that acre feet, which was a measurement with which I was unfamiliar, are used to measure water volumes only in the USA, I think, though. It is the volume of water that will flood or irrigate an acre of level land one foot deep in water. There we go. That makes sense. Acre feet. Uh, lake Mead, the largest artificial lake in the U.S., made by the Hoover Dam blocking the Colorado River, has its available storage quantity quoted in acre feet. My farm water account was always in cubic meters. I think we can probably agree cubic meters is a slightly more sensible <laughs> measurement than acre feet. But, you know, fair enough. Uh, thank you for that clarification. All right. And that's that for today's video. That's that for yesterday's clues. Uh, that's that for the puzzle. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday edition of the Daily Solve. Another themeless puzzle, the second of two themeless puzzles, could very well be a trickier one than this, and that is the intention. We'll see if it if it lives up to that billing. So do join me for that for that puzzle. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.